and welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. So I was doing a stream and I was having some technical issues, but it doesn't seem to have affected the actual video. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some more of my homebrew HeroQuest editions. So once again, uh, these are not all my original ideas. Many of these are sort of community inspired things. Um, but if I had to list every single person that inspired me, I'd be here all day. Um, suffice to say, if you are interested in this sort of stuff, go check out Ye Old Inn. Um, go check out the forums and look up some of this stuff. You'll see just all kinds of interesting, neat ideas that people have come up with. This is just my personal take on it, my personal spin on it for private use. None of this stuff is for sale. It's just for fun. Uh, to take, as Phoenix would say, to take a great game and make it even better. So now everybody has their own idea of what makes a game better. Is it making it more complex? Is it making it simpler? My general philosophy is just to take what's already there, what's in the lore, and just expand it a little bit, maybe make more of the same, maybe make a couple new wrinkles to keep it interesting. So somebody else designed this. Uh, they just took the familiar scroll idea and... Um, so you have a deck of spell scrolls. So let's say you'll draw uh, a card and you'll get, oops, I got a ruined scroll, so it's just nothing. But maybe I'll get a pass through rock, maybe I'll get psychic recovery, maybe I'll get heal body. So that's kind of a cool thing. Instead of just having a stack of artifacts, because you're supposed to at various times draw a spell scroll and just see what it was. Well, I introduced a homebrew rule where, let's say you're in a room, and you're searching for treasure. Well, in the room, there is a piece of furniture called the Sorcerer's Table. Kind of looks like a stone table with a, a big book that's open. Well, maybe there's a sheet there that has some extra magic on it, right? So if there's no, no treasure designated in the quest, special treasure designated in the quest notes, then I'll allow the hero to draw a spell scroll, but only if he's, let's say, a spell type character like an elf or a wizard or a mystic or an alchemist. Well, if I'm using the non-magical campaign, what would I use instead of a spell scroll? Glad you asked. Well, here are the alchemist items. So there you got the alchemist item. I had a fun time creating these, a really fun time, and I want to show them to you. So here, of course, is the rule card. So you can see pretty much what I already said. As far as that goes. Now, what if there's an alchemist bench? Because the alchemist bench is already a piece of furniture in HeroQuest. Well, in that case, you draw a potion. Um, you can draw a potion there. Now, with this, the idea is you can actually take one of your previously used spells or um, skills, alchemist skills. Like, let's say you used up your Greek fire or your ball of flame. Well, you could restore it, but what if you haven't used any yet? Well, then you get to draw another one. You get to draw another one, So, but just once. So the next time somebody searches, they're just going to get a treasure card. But here they are, and I had a lot of fun. I just The concept of it was like emergency rations. So you've got um, a little pouch. You tear it open, and you've got basic instructions that any fool could figure out. And so even if the barbarian got one of these, he could he could use it. So we've got the fire lance. So there you've got remove from pouch, light fuse, aim at enemy. And that symbol indicates that it's fire or pyro. So if you were trying to summon an elemental, you could actually contribute some of these because this is like an, uh, an object, an item. So you can actually pass it to another hero, whereas a spell you can't because it's just something that you have. So um, single use, any one hero. So it's 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 exactly equivalent to the Fire Lance, which is equivalent to Fire of Wrath. So that's what that is. And they're all pretty much like this, but I love the little stick figure art that I found online. I was able to modify creatively to come up with these non-magical solutions to the same type of thing. If you ever go to the um, uh, the inn, you'll see more of this type of stuff. So blast. This is actually based on something someone else created, um, but it's air, if I'm not mistaken, arrow. Skate. Huh. 
Hyrax Cage, so that's Earth, or uh, Terra, not Ignis, but Terra. So open cage toward wall, follow Hyrax, keep moving until safe. So he's digging, he's digging, he's digging. There's many walls you're moving along. So it's passed through rock. That's what it is, equivalent. Chill. So it's like uh, pepper spray, except it's ice spray into the face of the attacker. Remove from pouch, aim at enemy, squeeze trigger. Ice storm, remove from pouch, throw toward enemy, get away to safety. So instant ice. Paralyzing dart, insert dart into pipe, point toward enemy, blow sharply on other end. So that's like sleep. So that's water symbol. Medicinal herbs, remove from pouch, apply to wounds. It's actually earth. It's like heal body. Greek fire. So it's like a flamethrower, really. You just pump it up, light, flame. Pump barrel, light wick, aim at enemy, pull trigger. Some more hog letter. Put on shoulders, turn canister knob to inflate, pull release. Sounds like swift wind. Ice bridge. So he's creating a bridge there with the, looks like a fire extinguisher type of thing. Oh yeah, and the jet pack, <laughs> big balloon. There's another Greek fire. Because there's some multiples in here because there would be if you, let's say you had Return of the Witch Lord and Keller's Keep, they both have spell scrolls. So alchemist items equivalent. Chinese rocket, plant toward enemy, light fuse, get away. It's fire, pyro. It's warmth, roof and pouch, apply to wounds. Gossamer net. It's more of a web cannon than like a Spider-Man web shooter, but picture it's like like a t-shirt cannon, but it fires uh, webbing. Oh, and then there's instead of the ruined skull, there's a ruined item, so it's expired. That five-year shelf life has run out. So the alchemist item is damaged, and the contents of the pouch is expired. As such, it cannot be useful to any hero who finds it. Return this card to the bottom of the alchemist item deck. And to achieve that effect, I just found a uh, photograph of some peeled paint, like off of the side of a building, and then just superimposed that over the image I was using of the emergency rations pouch. So that's pretty fun. And these are actually bright yellow, but because of the lighting, it looks a little dull, but that's okay. So the fire lance, as before. Ah, oh, yes, mental elixir. So this is like psychic recovery. Restores all your lost mind points. Remove flask from pouch. Drink entire contents. And very similar is the berserker brew. So he doesn't have the waves coming off of his head. Remove flask from pouch. Drink entire contents. Drink responsibly. Okay, treasure flare. So instead of treasure without doom from the elf quest pack, you can pick uh, cards from the treasure deck, ignoring any wandering monsters and hazards until you get gold, potion, gems, or jewels. Or safely open a chest, disarming any trap on it. So instead of searching for treasure, you just play that card and you get that benefit. So remove from pouch, pull in, toss towards suspect treasure or furniture, search carefully after smoke clears. Medicinal herbs once again. Ah oh, yes, shellac and mortar. Open pouch, cover eyes, empty contents overhead, add water, mixture hardens. So it's like rock skin. Terra, or earth. Berserker brew again, and then the rules card. I figure with each of these decks, if I just print out a rules card, that makes it easy because then you can just refer back, just like you would with um, a regular deck of cards. So all these are optional, but certain quests will call for using these. But I like 
the house rules that I created because I can incorporate them to any quest. So let's say any quest that happens to have a sorcerer's table. Oh, I can draw one of these. Oh, any quest that has a alchemist bench. Oh, I can draw one of the potion cards. Um, let's say there's a weapons rack. Well, you can use the equipment cards. So these are the equipment cards. This is based directly on the European version because instead of the armory board, which I showed in my unboxing, they had these cards. Now the image is slightly different. It's very subtly different. Um, but on the back, now you, you may be used to a drawing, but this is just kind of clipped from the armory. So you've got like the crossbow there. I'll say the resell value, so it's half the value. But let's say uh, a hero searches for treasure in a room with a weapons rack, and there's no designated uh, treasure for that room in the quest notes. So they can draw one of these and see what they get. So it could be a crossbow. Let's move those out of the way there. Plate mail. So it's very familiar. Hand axe. Now, of course, that's a modification. Again, I, I looked at other people's custom armories and I kind of borrowed some of their ideas, modified the ones that um, I thought needed tweaking. So a lot of times I just played with the price. So the hand axe is a throwable weapon and that was in the European version. Buckler, this is a brand new one. So I like the idea of, you know, you're doing these rolls and what if you get a really good roll but you didn't need all those defensive hits, all those shields that you rolled? Well, it functions as a regular shield, but if you combine it with a sword, when you attack or defend, you may count one white shield rolled as a skull. So if you've got an extra white shield beyond what you were using for defense, you can use it. And I thought, well, this one may be overpowered, but, but uh, we'll see. So far, nobody, well, one person has bought one, but I don't think they've had a chance to use it in combat yet. So we'll see. It's the hammer. It's kind of like, this is just uh, a version of the hand axe that the cleric could use. Maybe they hit him with the side of the hammer. Chain mail. Shield. It's pretty common. There's the short bow. So this is the ranger's starting weapon, if you remember from the previous video, previous stream. So the ranger custom character starts with that short bow. You got the long bow. Now, strategically, though, in HeroQuest, it's probably best to start with uh, defense. Get get everybody a helmet first, or bracers, uh, and and then slowly like upgrade their weapons. So get some broadswords, or whatever. It's it's tempting to splurge on some big weapon like this, but if you do that, I mean, yeah, you're going to be good at attacking, but you're not going to have, you, you know, your party's going to be fairly weak. The way I used to play Hero Quest is I would go with the the maxim that a strong the best defense is a strong offense. So I'd upgrade everybody's weapons right away, give them the strongest weapons I could, and then get them armor. Um, probably a smarter way is is start start with defense, but different people have different ideas. If you're controlling four heroes, it's easier than if you have to um, debate about what you think is going to be best. Everybody does their own thing. Rapier. Uh, this slender blade attacks with two combat dice. It may strike diagonally. Combined with a dagger, and whenever an enemy attack misses, you may roll two dice in response. If you get at least one skull, you, it may be counted against your opponent. So you can get a one one at, uh, die attack, one skull attack against them, unblockable. So it's kind of a neat thing if the enemy misses. Now, originally I was kind of resistant to creating this because I thought, well, I don't know, it seems like it's maybe the wrong time period, but really Hero Quest, just like Warhammer Fantasy, is using all kinds of different time periods kind of blended together with fantasy elements. And when I heard that the remake, Hero Quest, is going to feature a character that has a rapier, I thought, fine. But I like the special ability. So this might be overpowered, but we'll see. I mean, it's not necessarily going to be... It's basically like a three-dice weapon, but one of the dice is going to be unblockable if they miss. So good against low-level enemies. Plus, it gives you a reason to keep keep one of those daggers handy, and they're cheap. You got the mace, so that is the starting weapon of the cleric, which I talked about in the previous 
uh, video as far as a uh, custom character inspired by Legacy of Sorcil, just like the Ranger, the Cleric, one of the Clerics. You got the Whip. Now this is like a weaker version of the Rabbit Boots, because the Rabbit Boots, as many of you remember, allow you to jump a trap a lot easier. Because normally to jump a trap, you have to roll one combat die, and if it's a skull, you fall in and you get hurt. So, okay, well, the rabbit boots mean that anything but a black shield will allow you to jump the trap. So it's much easier. And it's a permanent thing. You can just hang on to it, and you can keep jumping those traps. Well, the whip is a weapon, so it functions like a staff. One attack die, and it's diagonal. And then it, for a pit trap only, so not any time, any kind of trap, just a pit, uh, roll anything but a black shield on one combat die to successfully jump it. Now you still have to have enough movement left to actually get over it, but you can do the Indiana Jones thing and swing over. So if you if you hum the Indiana Jones theme music as you're going over the pit, you know, be my guest. And the wizard can use it. Or the mystic. Here's the classic staff weapon. And these are all North American staffs. Now they're uh, stats. Now this this is the Warhammer. So it's really just like the Battle Axe, but it's more expensive, and the Cleric can use it. So the Cleric, similar to how the Wizard can spend a lot of money and get armor and, and weapons, uh, so too the Cleric can spend more money to get the equivalent of these bladed weapons that he or she can't use. And there you've got the Cloak. Now this is modified from the Cloak of Protection from the EU version. So in the European version, you didn't have the Wizard's Cloak. Uh, instead, there was a Cloak of Protection that you could just buy. And it wasn't that expensive. So I increased the price of the Cloak and said anybody can use it. So the Wizard, yes, can find the Wizard's Cloak, or the Alchemist can get the Alchemist's Cloak. And then other characters can decide to buy it if they want to. Functions as lightweight armor. Now here's the torch. This was a unique creation. Um, other people had torches, just like other people had whips and things, but I decided to come up with a special ability for it that I don't think anybody else had, which is to say, okay, sure, um, it attacks with one combat die. Oh, you know, I forgot to put on the card a detail. So when lit, the torch lasts for one quest, attacking with one combat die, not only illuminating the darkness, but also lets you ignore any hazard card cards drawn when searching for treasure. Okay, yes, I did do that. So it blocks the hazards, which are normally unblockable hits when you're searching for treasure. Oh, you fell in a hole. Oh, you get shot by an arrow. You lose one. But if you're if you're holding one of these, now it costs you 250 gold, so you got to decide, can I search enough for treasure to make up for the fact that I just bought this thing? unless you found it or something. But I forgot to put on here that when you strike, let's say you're using it to attack an enemy as a weapon. If you get a skull, you can roll another combat die for the fire damage. So you basically get an unblockable second hit, potentially. Now, if you get nothing, then you get nothing. But if you get another skull, okay, it's like a two, two hit. So I forgot to put that on the card. But it's on the armory, so if someone's reading it, they can see that. Short sword. On the expanded armory, I should say. There's the sling. Now the wizard can use that. So it's a ranged attack weapon, and you have unlimited rocks to throw. But it's only one combat die. So it's like having a whole pile of daggers. An infinite pile of daggers. There's the spear. Now this weapon was in the... European version. I adjusted it just slightly, so it's a two attack diagonal weapon. Can't be used by the wizard though, or the mystic or the alchemist in my setup. There's the broadsword, classic broadsword. Long sword, which of course was introduced in the North American version. Three attack and diagonal. The great sword. And my, the idea behind this is I decided this is only for the Barbarian. It's four attack, and it can attack four diagonally. It's a ridiculous weapon. But it's like the ultimate sword. He should be the ultimate sword-swinging uh, lunatic in the game. 
bracers. So this is like the wizard's equivalent of, instead of buying a helmet, he would just buy these. And since the ranger and the wizard, or alchemist and the mystic, um, are similar to the wizard in terms of their armor restrictions, it's a more expensive uh, piece of armor. The North American version, you didn't have this, but I thought, Okay, well, it's something else for him to buy if he wants to get a little bit stronger. Because he doesn't rely on his fighting. He relies on his mental and uh, uh, chemical knowledge. The halberd. So it's three attack diagonally, but it's a two-handed weapon. So you can't use this with a shield. And I forgot to put that on the card. But it's on my version of the armory. It explains it. It's a long weapon. There's the toolkit, so other heroes besides the dwarf or the ranger can try to disarm traps with uh, less probability of doing it successfully, but at least some probability, because otherwise you just have to jump a trap. You can't disarm it. Now, if it's a like a furniture trap, a uh, treasure chest, uh, you may want to get rid of it rather than get hit by it. There's the classic dagger throwing weapon introduced in the North American version. The helmet. Classic armor. So now some people consider this a naughty word, but the bastard sword is actually featured in one of the Dave Mo Morris, Dave Morris Hero Quest novels. Just mentioned in passing in the Choose Your Own Adventure type section of the book, based on Hero Quest. And so the idea behind it is okay, it's three combat dice, just like the broadsword, right? Well, if the barbarian is using it, he gets to substitute one black die. You remember in the upgrades, I was talking about how when he becomes a champion, he can substitute one black die using any sword. Well, if he's using this one and he's a champion, he can substitute two because it does one by default. Plus, he gets one for being a champion. So it's like one white die and two black dice. So much stronger than a regular broadsword in terms of probability. Now, as he becomes a knight, well, um, he can have... Uh, two, so he'd be doing three, uh, or I should say, um, no, I, yeah, I see what I did with this one. So as a champion, he has two black dice, plus he already has one, so it'd be three black dice. But as a knight, he would have no benefit to using this beyond that because it's already three, but he could use a battle axe and have four or I should say he would have three of the battle axe. He'd have three black and one white. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm losing track a little bit of <laughs> some of the stuff without having it in front of me. I mean, I, I look at this stuff every so often, but I haven't actually used it on the gaming table in quite a while. So I'm kind of having to do some of it by memory. So thanks for bearing with me. But as long as the rules that you make up make sense to you, that's what, that's what matters. <laughs> as long as Zargon can keep it straight in the campaign, then that's fine. So give yourself a little cheat sheet if you need it. Remind the heroes, hero players. There's the tower shield. Originally, I just thought, okay, it's just as strong as plate mail, except you're carrying it in your hand. Now, since it slows you down, you can't wear plate armor and have the tower shield because you wouldn't be able to move. But if you are the paladin, you get one extra movement square when wearing plate. So if if the paladin had plate armor and the tower shield, he would move one square per turn, which is ridiculous. So maybe better for him to have Boren's armor. Then, uh, his, yes, his movement is restricted a little bit, but not just to one square per turn. Now, um, it does give you those two extra combat dice in defense, but you can substitute two green dice, which you remember... I explained the green dice have a greater chance of getting a hero shield. So against projectiles. Now enemies, monsters that use projectiles, uh, like let's say bows, crossbows or whatever, are kind of rare. So it won't come up that often. But still, I wanted to make it unique. So a reason to buy a tower shield rather than some other piece of armor. So big shield. And the rallying horn. This was a fun one. Now, it didn't quite print out perfectly, but I think I put too much text or I didn't put enough spacing. But that happens sometimes. So when blown, this horn will alert any allies within sight as well as any who are on your half of the board. So I just as big a area as possible without just being everywhere. Once alerted, these allies may roll one extra red die 
during the movement phase for the next round. Because a big problem that comes in sometimes is you're trying to move around and you don't have enough movement. You keep getting these bad rolls. People have come up with different solutions. One is to say, okay, fine. Everybody just gets two extra squares of movement. Everybody's in haste. Or to say, yeah, there's no monsters around. You can just have unlimited movement. Or you can all move 12 squares. But I wanted this because I also wanted it to be a little bit of a risk. Because, yes, each figure can be alerted once per round. But every fourth use of a horn triggers a wandering monster. So the wandering monster from the quest will attack the person that was blowing the horn. Now you can have multiples. So it's like, okay, three blasts on this one, three blasts on that one. You know, 250 gold. But other people had used horns, but I don't think anybody had come up with one that gives you bonus movement like that. So I like to think that I came up with that idea. And then, of course, last but not least, the flail of fail. No, the flail. Uh, just a ball and chain, tax with two, uh, available in spiked and blunt versions, so the cleric can use it. And it can't be used by an alchemist or a wizard. So those are the equipment cards. So I've covered a lot of ground here in these um, series of streams. I also want to talk about a few more homebrew type cards. These are the lone monster cards. Now, a couple people came up with similar ideas along these lines. The idea that if you encounter a lone monster, so let me get the rules card, if neither one of you have attacked each other yet, you can decide to try to parlay with the monster. So there's the rule card there. Certain monsters you can't parlay with, but you can attempt. So this is like a secondary treasure deck, essentially. You can draw a card, and most of the time it'll get rid of the monster without even fighting. But it'll either give you something good or something bad. And actually, the odds of you getting something bad are higher on this than searching for treasure. But still, even with the bad ones, you may get rid of the monster. So, And you can only attempt it once. So let's look at some examples. So... You parlay, oh, look at this. Dropped a potion of healing. That's cool. Or what's what's the next one? So he's got the flag of truce there. I tried to make his expression a little less hostile. Like he's like, hey, truce. Temporary truce. Boots of speed. The boots of speed are from Legacy of Sore Cells. So it's uh, kind of like a permanent upgrade. Gives you two extra movement. Because most of those monsters are pretty fleet footed. Fleet footed. Wow. <laughs> Sorry about that. Slip of the tongue. All right, what else? See, a wandering monster. So here um, <laughs> you get another monster. So the monster calls out to the wandering monster who then attacks immediately. So there's a, there's a bad one. Junk, so you get nothing. But you do get rid of the monster. So... It's a risk, but maybe the hero wants to try something different. Just, I mean, yeah, you could just gang up on the single monster, or you could try to try to parlay, use the lone monster deck. So, another option for you if you're looking for fun things to make your hero quest just a little more interesting, and you don't mind printing out some cards. And I just have these on a little card holder for fun as if you'd be just you know drawing those out and the last one I want to show you now in this homebrew series for now anyway because there's always new stuff to see just about is the if I can locate them the summon elementals so I showed you the elemental figures before. I showed you how in my upgrade system, the wizard or the alchemist and the mystic character, when they reach a certain level, so let's say after they've completed 10 quests or 14 quests, depending on the difficulty, uh, they can then attempt to summon an elemental. So I created these cards. And again, just grabbing that image from online, manipulating a little bit. Um, 
and let's see there's the so you've got like earth uh, air elemental earth fire water other people have done similar things to this so it's like a scroll so the summon elemental so a knight level hero such as well the mystic or the wizard or the alchemist may on their turn play three unused spell or skill or equivalent scroll or alchemist item cards of one element type to summon an elemental figure. So let's say you had Fire of Wrath, Ball of Flame, and Courage, or you had two of those and you had a spell scroll of, of Courage. You could play those three. They haven't been used yet. And you could say, I want to summon an elemental. Assuming you're a knight, you can do it. So this is the, uh, you will roll one red die, and then you add one to it. This is the number of turns that the elemental can be used. Place the figure near the summoner on any unoccupied square within sight. See the elemental card. Elementals are immune to attack, but can be affected by certain spells and mutually destroy elementals they pass through. So mostly they do damage by passing through other figures. And again, I haven't play tested this yet. So I was trying to figure out like, okay, if, if the person got really lucky rolls, they could clear out a lot of a map of monsters because they could just decimate them because their attacks are mostly unblockable and the elementals themselves can't be destroyed unless the enemy also had an elemental which it would have to be a, a chaos alchemist chaos sorcerer who had a bunch of spells like maybe the frozen horror could summon his own elemental to attack yours and they just destroy each other and then be back to fighting hand to hand but we'll see so We'll see how it goes, but I like the concept. But these are very high level characters. So you've got a water elemental. So its cost is three water spells. And then it moves with two red dice after the summoner. Each figure it passes through rolls uh, three combat dice, losing one body point for each skull. So if it passes through a hero, same thing passes through a monster but it's under your control so you control what it does it may also use sleep on any one figure it can see at the cost of one additional turn so let's say you rolled a six then it would have seven turns so this thing would survive for seven turns but if it uses sleep it's you subtract one you burn one of those turns up after the turns are over it's run out of turns or it passes through another elemental it evaporates so that's how the water elemental works. And similarly, the fire, all the stuff is the same, except that um, it uses ball of flame as its ability. So it can use ball of flame, but it uses up a turn every time it does that. Okay. Earth elemental. So this one's a little different. So it moves with only one red die. So it's very slow. But each figure it passes through roll five combat dice. So you can see I was inspired by the rolling boulder trap from Keller's Keep. Uh, five combat dice, losing one body point for each skull. So no defense, just like the other ones. It can move with two red dice, but each time this subtracts one turn from the total. When not moving, it is like a solid block. So it's like a big stone statue that no one can pass through. Once out of, unless you have passed through rock. Once out of turns or passing through another elemental, it crumbles into harmless dust. And then you've got the air elemental, last but not least. And so with this one, every figure it passes through doesn't take damage. Instead, they are impacted um, as if they had been hit with a tempest or a gossamer net. They you lose one turn. So... You could just make everybody in the room lose a turn if you had enough movement to pass through everybody. It may attack any adjacent or diagonal figure with five combat dice on a turn. So similar to a genie attack or a Chinese rocket, but only touching, so not ranged. It may attack one figure it can see from a distance with five combat dice. So there's the ranged ability. But when it attacks at range, it costs an extra turn. So there's the uh, elementals, again, which the these two characters could summon at that knight level. So it'll be fun to, to someday get to the level where we could try these out 
and uh, see how well it works. Or even just say, okay, fine, these characters are knights. Let's see what kind of mayhem they can cause in this particular map, this particular quest. I mean, they could run roughshod over like a boss monster. But you got to think about it this way, too, is that you would have to forego using your magical powers until that stage in the quest saying like okay now we're going to let loose now we're going to summon an elemental now we're going to just utterly destroy everything so there's more stuff i could i could share i could talk about got lots of miniatures lots of cards but these are the main ones so these homebrew rules i like them because they give the hero something to some a little few more surprises um, some upgrades they can strive for and some ways that they can try to be creative in in the process of playing and um, just you know use their minds and so because sometimes you're playing and it'll just seem like all I'm doing is just rolling 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 you want it to be more of a role playing game than a rolling game as as someone once quipped Oh yeah, and just as a special bonus here at the end, so this is, oh, it's so reflective, you can see everything, but yeah, it's just another version of the, we'll switch over here, so it's another version of the um, Game Master screen, or information screen, so I'll just open it up here, it's so bright, okay, so there you can see some details from the game. And it, it covers uh, things up just a little bit better than that little piece of cardboard that they gave you. And I'm starting to get a little scratchy throat, so I'm going to end the stream here. Uh, you've all seen my dice rolling box. I, I like rolling the dice. There's tiles in here. There's the original character boards. Here's the uh, plastic version of the dice. And... You know what? I'll save that other stuff for a future stream. So it may be a while before we get another stream. We'll see. Only got a few more days before I go on vacation. But I do look forward to future opportunities to talk about uh, homebrew stuff. And, you know, maybe some one of these days we'll get an actual game on here. How fun would it be to stream a live game or at least a recently played game? So until next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Um, and I'm going to drink some water. All right. Take care. Bye.